So as I was walking around the other day, as I do, I was thinking, what's gonna happen in Italy this season? So I said to myself, F it, let's do another preview. So here we go, and we're gonna start with Atalanta, who after finishing in the top half of the table only once in the last 10 years, finished in fourth last season over both Milan clubs, which isn't really that hard, and Lazio and Fiorentina to qualify for the Europa League. And they did it by relying on their youth with players like Roberto Gagliardini, I did my best there, Frank Kessi and Andrea Conti, who were undaunted by playing key roles at a tender age, but unfortunately for the club, they all got sold. Gagliardini got purchased by Inter Milan halfway through the season, and Kessi and Conti got purchased by AC Milan this summer. And with no big signings coming in, and with having to balance a European competition in their schedule. I say the bottom half of the table is in their future again, 11th. And up next we have Napoli, who may not have the budget of Juventus or the newly minted AC Milan, but they have a core of players that played some of the best calcio in the club's history last season, which was evidenced by them setting a record for points in the season with 86, and by scoring 94 goals in 38 games, which is just and with Juventus looking a little vulnerable right now, and Roma being Francesco Totti list for the first time in 20 years, and by them not losing any of last season's goal scoring machines, Lorenzo Insigne and Dries Mertens to bigger clubs, which I thought was a bit of a surprise. I thought those guys were gonna get purchased. I think they're gonna make a real run for the Scudetto and get second. And now let's talk about Genoa, a club that beat Juventus 3-1 last season, but then gave up four goals at home to lose to Palermo. Pretty much sums them up. They got some good days, they got some bad days, but I think the good is going to outweigh the bad, and they're gonna improve on their 16th place finish from last season and get 14th. And next up, it's Torino. And as much as I love manager Sanisha Mihaljevic's all-out attack mentality, last season, which led to their key man up top, Andrea Belotti, getting third in Serie A with 26 goals. And I'm actually surprised Belotti is still on the team. I thought he would have been sold for sure. and Perhaps he still will be, kind of like Mertens and Insigne with Napoli. But anyway, that fearless attacking philosophy absolutely killed them in the back as they gave up 66 goals over a 38 game season and all of those cannot be blamed on Joe Hart. So if Torino can show up that area of the field and keep Belotti, which are both big ifs, then I think they have a chance to finish a few places higher than last season, seventh. And now let's dive into the team known as SPAL, which stands for Society Polysportiva Ars and Labor, I think, I hope, maybe, who are back in the top division after 50 years away by winning back-to-back -back promotions under manager Leonardo Semplici, who loves playing a 3-5-2 and being resolute on defense while also attacking in numbers and with style, which I am a big fan of. And though the jump from Serie B to Serie A is a steep one, and you can ask Pescara about that, who killed it in Serie B two years ago before not being able to win their first Serie A game until mid-February last season. Wow, that is incredible. There is room for hope because Spall has some owners in the Colombarini family that are putting some real money behind the team in a way that should be long lasting. Now, nothing's guaranteed, but it should be long lasting. And I think that'll be just enough to keep them up, 17th. And now it's time for Fiorentina, because they are a shit show, and I like talking about shit shows. They finished eighth last season, which is their worst finish since 2012. So they fired their manager, which is to be expected. And they hired a new one in Stefan Pioli, who has a recent track record with Lazio and Inter Milan of being a little bit better than average. So I don't think that's gonna inspire the supporters, especially with his so-so tactics. And they're in the middle of a fire sale, selling or letting go some of their most talented and loved players to other hated clubs, like Fernando Bernadeschi to Juventus, Nicolo Kalinic to AC Milan, Borja Valencia, to enter and fan favorite Gonzalo back to Argentina. And with the current owners trying to sell, I think they're gonna be worse than they were last season until some stability comes back into the team. Ninth. And up next, it's my favorite named team in Italy, Hell Yes Verona, because hell yes, they are back in the top flight after being down in Serie B for one season. So I think that gives them an advantage over the other newly promoted teams because they were recently in the top flight so they know what it looks like and feels like and tastes like. So if they can get former AC Milan striker who I just like to call Pazzini, firing up top alongside his new partner Alessio Cerci, who still hasn't reached the potential we all know that he has, then hell yes, I think they're staying up 15th. And next up, it's time to talk a little Roma, who got rid of their sporting director, then lost their club legend to retirement, then saw their pretty successful manager leave to go to Inter Milan, then they sold some of their best players away, like Mohamed Salah, 
Antonio Rudiger, and Leandro Paredes. And they didn't really replace them with players that are equipped with the same type of talent and experience, but they took a chance on some players that have some potential, like Mexican international Hector Moreno, who I'm really excited to see how he performs in Italy. And they got some players with experience like Manchester City's Alexander Kolarov, as well as trying to push a lot of their younger academy players into the first team, which I assume is to find the next Toti, which I respect, but I don't think it's gonna push them on to compete with Juventus or even Napoli this season. Fourth. And now let's show some love to Udinese because they got Kevin Lasagna on their team. Kevin fucking Lasagna. And they have the same coach as last season and he's organized and doesn't take any shit. And that always seems to do pretty well. Teams usually respond to that until they don't. And they added a few quality attacking options. But did I mention Kevin Lasagna? I did, right? Kevin fucking Lasagna. They're gonna finish 10th. And now let's give it up for Sassuolo because they put the ass and sass and the sass and Sassuolo. And what am I even talking about? It has nothing to do with anything. But they are the perfect example of what happens when a mid-table club overachieves and qualifies for Europe. Last season they had to spread themselves way too thin over multiple competitions only to get knocked out of the group stages of the Europa League, which can't feel good to get knocked out of the Europa League that early. And they finished 10th in the league, a full 12 points behind where they were the season before. But now with Europe out of the equation, they can focus solely on one thing and be better for it. So I'll say 8th. And now let's talk some Inter Milan. Because at the start of last season, it was was an unmitigated disaster. Manager Roberto Mancini departed two weeks before the season began. Then Frank De Boer took over and lasted only 85 days. And then Stefano Pioli took over until May. Then Stefano Vecchi had the job for a month before the reins were finally handed over to someone named Luciano Spalletti, who Inter snatched from Roma, that fortunately knows what the f he's doing. And in his patented 4-2-3-1 formation, and with a full preseason with some talented players like Mauro Icardi, Jao Mario, and Ivan Perisic, who I'm surprised that Spalletti held on to given Manchester United's interest. I think Inter are going to have some good moments this season, but not enough to finish higher than fifth. But like Jose Mourinho does quite well, I think Spalletti will have this team doing some very special things in his second season in charge. So Inter fans just need to be patient for one more season. And have you guys heard about Benevento? Like Carpi and Crotoni last season and Spall this season, this club is in the top flight for the first time in their history. And as much as I want to believe in the fairy tale for all the clubs that have wonderful stories of humble beginnings to getting promoted with the biggest clubs in Italy, I'm placing my money on Spall to be the one that survives and not Benevento. Sorry boys. 20th. And next up, it's Sampdoria, who since being promoted from Serie B for the 2012-2013 season, have been bang average ever since. They're kind of like the West Brom of Serie A, who are just good enough to be a solid mid-table team, and that's all that they will ever be, and I think they're fine with that, as long as they beat rivals Genoa on a yearly basis. Also, fun fact for you, when Sampdoria got relegated in 2011, 30,000 Genoa fans took to the streets to hold a mock funeral for them, carrying a casket draped in Sampdoria. Doria colors and this is a plus commitment to sticking it to your rival and that is very well done. Anyway, I say Sam Doria gets 12th. And now let's give some love to Lazio, who just knocked off Juventus as the winners of the Italian Super Cup, which I believe not only gives them hope that this season can be a good one, but it also gives every club hope in Serie A, minus Juventus, that Juventus is vulnerable this season. However, after last season's fourth place finish for Lazio, they qualified for the Europa League, which of course is a respectable achievement, but it means more energy committed elsewhere, which wasn't an issue for them last season because they weren't in it. So with multiple competitions to concentrate on, and because so many of the other clubs, i.e. AC Milan, are making big moves to get better quicker with that cheddar, and Inter Milan hiring a better manager, I really see that impacting Lazio's success in the league overall, and they're gonna finish sixth. And how about Crotone? Last season for them was simply a miracle, as the club only had 14 points from their first 29 games. 14 points! So they look like certain locks for going back down to Serie B, but in the final final nine games they picked up 20 points which was more than Juventus managed over the same nine game span and on the last day of the season they beat Lazio 3-1 to stay up. It really was a miracle but because they have a team that can't match the financial resources of the top clubs and even the mid 
mid-table clubs. Many of their top players last season were on loan, including top scorer Diego Falcinelli, who went back to Sassuolo. He had 13 goals and three assists for them, so that is gonna be a big loss. But like Leicester, they will always have this miracle season to look back on when they did the impossible, but the reality is, they're going straight back down this season, 19th. And next up, it's Chievo Verona, who I honestly don't know much about other than they share a city with hell yes! They have a tough looking bald manager who looks like he could beat me up. They have a nice mix of young and old in their current squad, and their nickname is the Flying Donkeys, which, again, I'll be honest here, sounds like something from a Disney movie, but I think if you saw that in real life, a flying donkey, you wouldn't f with it. And I don't think you're gonna wanna f with Chievo this year, 13th. And up next, it's the team that has a silent G in its name, Cagliari, which makes me wonder if they have a silent G in their team, you know, a silent gangster who's just getting shit done. And actually, they do. And his name is Marco Borriello, who at the tender age of 35, scored 20 goals for the club in all competitions last season, but I don't see him being able to match that number this season, maybe half. And with a lot of losses to key players, especially to a back line that was already a little shaky, I actually think Cagliari is gonna struggle this season. And as my surprise shock pick in Serie A throughout my whole thing, my whole list here, I think they're gonna get relegated after they overachieved and finished 12th last season, 18th. And second to last we have AC Milan, who've spent over 200 million euros overhauling this squad to become the Manchester City or Manchester United or Chelsea or just take your pick of Serie A by learning how to buy a league title. So let's start from the back for their impressive potential starting 11. You got Donnarumma in goal, who's a stud. You got Bonucci in the middle of their back three, stud. You got Musaccio with 250 games of experience in La Liga with Villarreal. And he's gonna be even better next to Bonucci on one side, as will Romanelli on the other side. Then you have a midfield of Kessi, who they ripped from Atalanta. Uh, Lucas Biglia comes from Lazio. They have highly touted wingback Ricardo Rodriguez from Wolfsburg out wide left, and then highly touted wing back Andrea Conti out wide right. Then you got Hakan Chahanalu pulling the strings underneath. So when you look at that, just magic. But then up top, this for me is where things get dicey because Carlos Baca is out due to manager Vincenzo Montella not really caring for him. Then they sold Lapindula to Genoa, which leaves 21-year-old Portuguese international Andre Silva, who signed from Porto, to be the guy. And he has promises of becoming a top, top player, but I don't think he's there yet. And he's gonna partner with Suso, who I like, but he and Silva can't be the big names that Milan really need to compete with the other clubs at the top. So I expect them to chase a few players at this striker position. And I think Diego Costa would be a really nice fit. Anyway, I think it's gonna take Montella a season if the owners give him that much time to get this talented bunch on the same page. But I do think they'll be better than last year. Much better. Third. And finally, it's Juventus. The six time reigning champions of Serie A, the reigning Coppa Italia winner, the Champions League finalists, and home to the world's greatest goal goalkeeper Gigi Buffon are not going to be as good as last year because they sold Leo Bonucci, who I believe was an important emotional leader for the team on and off the field, which as much as I respect and appreciate Medi Benatia and Mattia De Siglio, they're just not going to replace what Bonucci brought to the table. And then in some small ways, since he wasn't there very long, losing Danny Alves too, who is such a positive influence everywhere he goes, will hurt as well. But they made enough signings to continue to keep the league crown firmly attached to their heads with Blaise Matuidi, who they got for an incredible price, Douglas Costa, and Fernando Bernadeschi. And with the continued evolution of budding superstar Paulo Dybala partnering with the steady Gonzalo Higuain, unless he's playing for Argentina in the final, this is once again their league to lose, and they're gonna get first. But it'll be closer this time and may even come down to the last weekend of the season because I'm feeling Napoli to make a real run at it. Anyway, that is it. I am done talking because I can't talk anymore. I'm all talked out. But I want to hear from you. So let me know your thoughts down below. And I look forward to revisiting these picks in May just to see how many I got right, which of course will be all of them later. Oh my, I forgot about Bologna. I can't believe I forgot about them, and I guess if I forgot about them, that means they're not gonna have a real relevant season or make an impact in any way. So I'll say 16th. Sorry, Bologna.